It is 6.09 p.m. This meeting is called to order. Um, I just want to let you all know that you are being recorded and this meeting will be posted on the Peninsula Community Planning Board website as well as our YouTube channel. So um, be advised of that. Um, we do have some parliamentary and procedures. So the first round um, is to approve. Um, we have two sets of meeting minutes um, for May and for June. So um, I have submitted those all to uh, the committee members. I know, Corey, you weren't on, so you will most likely abstain from that vote. But um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the main meeting minutes. Okay. Mandy, um, first. Darren, second. Um, all in favor? Motion passes. Um, and then for June meetings, I make a motion to approve the June meeting minutes. I'll second. All right, Max, I forgot that. I might have missed one. I think I missed one. Maybe it um, doesn't matter. I can look and, uh, and abstain you from that. So two, yeah, five. If I, was, if I was not there, then take me out. All right, Max. Okay, all in favor? All right, awesome. Um, so at this point, is there any non agenda public comment? Hearing none. Uh, I'm going to move on to the other section. Oh, sorry about that. Um, what I'd like to do is to flip the action items because uh, Margaret mentioned that she needs to leave early. So I'd like to flip the e bike letter first and then we can move to Rosecrans because Rosecrans is a work in progress. Is everyone in favor of that response? Sure. All right, that passes. Okay. And then um, with that, we're going to move into that. So um, there's been several um, uh, state bills uh, that have passed and legislation with regards to e-bike uh, use amongst minors and adults in our uh, communities. And so I crafted up a letter which I've distributed to the board members to review um, I have received some feedback from other um, board members, which I can read into it, but I'd like to start the discussion about this letter and um, your thoughts on it, and if we need to recraft the, um, the contents of that letter. So um, I'd like to go ahead and um, I've got a couple copies here for you to reference if you don't have that. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Darren, you're on the committee? Yeah. Yes. 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 Awesome. So, um, and Corey, it is on the PCPB website as well. You can check your email. Can you just really quickly give me a little bit of okay. uh, on how this came about? Or is it, is it, was it parents concerned on e-bikes? Like, what exactly is the issue with e-bikes? Yeah, the issue Please. with e-bikes is just the presence of them being used amongst like middle school teenagers in the community. Um, especially during drop-offs and pickup times, there's uh, an increase of students utilizing those bikes. And there's some antics that are happening where you're seeing kids rough house, driving on sidewalks, not following um, traffic, but, you know, just not being responsible riders. And when you see them during the morning, um, pick up and drop off, um, you're seeing a lot of that behavior and it's just making it a dangerous element. This letter would be uh, in addition to support what is already out there for legislation, but to prompt the city to build up some form of regulation in tandem with the school district, perhaps. We do have safe routes to school, but there could be a level of accountability and an education opportunity. Um, through this, when I did issue out the letter, um, I got some really good feedback. And so I do want to read that yeah, out definitely. to everyone. Andrew Hollingsworth, he had a good one. He made uh, the recommendation that we remove the language um, prohibiting a person under 12 from an e-bike. Uh, bikes are an important part of growing up, and I used to pedal bikes for mile-long rides, going to the store, traveling the hills around my home, et cetera, while I was well under 12 years of age, since there was no other means of transportation available. I believe kids under 12 should have the same freedom and therefore would respectfully oppose the 12 age limit since you are proposing common sense regulation with your other suggested controls. Um, 
And he's bummed that they banned e-bike use long before bought because he does use that. Yeah. And so I did. And that's my thing is I don't want this to be like we're anti-e-bikes because I know I'm not. Um, and so I don't want to be like this whole coalition of joining forces to to make it more difficult for people to ride e-bikes for those that are responsible. So I guess when I did ride the wheel out the first time, I, it kind of sounded like it was more really well written, but kind of like supporting more of a band for it is what I kind of got out of it. It's not really a ban. I do want to. I like what you said earlier about making it kind of physical towards the school. Yeah, it's more of a cutting up, coming up with strategies when the children involved, yeah, right? Definitely. Transit, accountability, all of these things. I do like and that. what we've learned is that there's an education opportunity. Sandag offers education mm -hmm. uh, programs. The city offers some um, support to schools through Circle at San Diego, safe routes to schools. Yeah. There is that component for bike safety and to help make sure people are like, mm -hmm. following the rules and know what the rules are. So that's really where it's coming in and to looking and saying, hey, here's some of these recommendations. So if you are going to build out some regulation, these are some things that we'd like to see crafted and impact. Yeah. And so it's not a ban of any kind. And I did take Andrew's recommendation because I started thinking mm -hmm. about it. And he's right. You know, there's a lot of, uh, my daughter's 12 yeah. and she goes to Korea and I see a lot of kids going to Korea and even Dana. So I did agree with that, that I'd like to promote well, regulation and proper use, not inhibit yeah. people. And that's, and that's what I was, I guess, trying to say is that I'd like to see a little bit more safety behind it, like where they have to require wearing a helmet maybe. That's already, that's it's part already of, part of the law. Yeah. That's, already, that's already part of the law. Yes, yeah. that, that's already you, part. Under the age of 18, you must wear a helmet oh, while operating okay. a bicycle. That's good. So that helps also, out. So that first one. So now the next one um, came from Paul. You know, again, talking about the showboating, including riding on uh, only the back wheel, yeah. um, jumping on and off the curb, mm -hmm. intentional riding into other people, groups. He felt like that would be something to um, add. Um, Delana mentioned... Um, she likes the letter, but she says we should include verbiage that reminds folks that all cyclists are required to obey all traffic laws and um, California Vehicle Code. So, my recommendation for, for, for this letter is that the city craft something that holds the parents wholly responsible, and that they start utilizing that because they are because they already are they already parents are. already are, but. Problem with that is that nobody's enforcing this. Right. There's plenty of laws on the books. Mm -hmm. Give you an example that the city of San Diego passed, and it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. You have to lock your guns up. That's already yeah, a state like, law. Yeah. Okay. And there's no way to actually enforce that until a crime has been committed. Right. right? Yeah. So, True. so are we just are we just trying to make ourselves? Are are, are, are we just speaking to 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 hear ourselves speak? Or have we done any research to recognize that these things are already on the books? Probably. There's an enforcement issue that's the problem. There aren't the, the police officers are, are are here, they're in our community, and they are they are they are definitely within their rights to pull kids over mm -hmm. and ticket them. They can confiscate their bikes at a tremendous expense to the parents to get them back for those those kinds of those kinds of behaviors, especially the, the non-compliance in helmets. Going against traffic laws, actually, when those kids actually break the laws, I don't know about like the wheelies and all that other kind of stuff, but there are we, we know that there are levels of bikes that, that that actually aren't even legal to be on the streets yet. I see them around Point Loma all the time. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that this this letter is good as long as it doesn't get out to a point where it's where we sound like a bunch of like community advocates right. that haven't done our homework. Because <laughs> if we start looking like we haven't done our homework and we start to think about it, you know, us against the kids, like it should be like, hey, you know what? How about a police presence for a little while? Because remember, every time you see those people that blow that same stop sign every day at the bottom of Atlanta, eventually you see a police officer show up and what happens? That. That 
discipline that those police will be and say, oh man, these guys are good to take it. I'll bet I probably need to stop here. Well, so when the kids them. start seeing, hey, the cops are going around ticketing us and taking our bikes, the parents might have to start, start taking a deeper look into the antics of their kids. Well, well that's what we're asking. We've been this group now for a while, mm -hmm. a couple of years, and you've seen that that's been needed. Ask for neighbors is police presence, but we don't. We can't it. ask that. I mean, we I can ask that all it. day. I and it it's exactly is. What's I agree with you that there needs to be proper enforcement. That there is a lack of that. And you know, while we can put things just like people put billboards about anti-domestic violence. Oh, I saw a billboard, and that prompted me right. to not make that decision. That I agree with that thought process in a yeah. way. But where I feel that there is an opportunity is within these state bills, there is an education component. Mm -hmm. And that's where I, like I feel that. that is where I don't want this to be an anti-bike. And I don't think I the reason that came in is, again, this letter was crafted off of the legislation that's right. out there. I agreed there's existing laws on the book. People need to be following the rules. There's rules that can be enforced. We don't have that enforcement in our community. And I think here, this is much more than word speak because this has been an issue for a long time. I see that with the state bill, there's a component for education and a funding component that we can bring into the schools, either through SANDAG or through the Safe Routes to School where we can educate the kids. And what we're recommending here is that we do establish some sort of um, increased accountability with the school district and that there is some sort of agreement that these students make when they, you know, just like a, like a car, that's a privilege, you know, biking in our community is a privilege. And so if there's some common like, hey, this is if you're going to bike to our school, these are the rules. And this is how if you get contacted, if we get contacted, we're going to be having a set of um, education and also enforcement that if you're acting a fool and, and jeopardizing the safety of the community, that there could be some accountability structure with the school administration as what well, you know, and the police, there's something along those lines. And so I believe, yes, there's opportunities in this, but it's just asking yeah, for but more I, education. To be honest, I just don't see these kids. I mean, they're obviously doing their own thing. Like we're speeding here, but it's unless there's some sort of enforcement, strict enforcement, they're really not being monitored, right? Uh, yeah, I, I would just say that we may want to we may want to verify that the things that are on here are laws that are being enforced. Yes, you do. But if they are laws that are on the books, and I think the letter should maybe say something like our organization is very frustrated with what we see happening because we know these things are. Yeah, we're books. witnessing these we're things. And they're not being followed. And we know that that is a combination of education, parental, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, Guidance, guidance yeah. and and uh, and enforcement, and we would like to see uh, we would like to see the law that's here uh, uh, be, be followed in, in whatever fashion we have to do it. And we understand that enforcement is maybe not going to happen all the time, but I think they need to know that enforcement is an issue. And maybe the schools, like you said, could be somehow enforcing. Uh, let's say a parent has to come into a parent conference of this year. Show voting on you know somewhere on the street or something mm -hmm. or whatever whatever the term would be or cutting somebody off or going across the street uh, in a haphazard manner or something um, or you know yeah no I think that would be fine we could delineate that's, that's like what right. is existing I would like to add on I think there's also a infrastructure component so for the same idea for how you might not trust the driver to stop uh, stop sign and you install a roundabout to slow people down. There is an element where you can do this with bicycles as well. So for instance, you have them right now driving, like riding here between Carrera and uh, along the most boulevard, you have to ride on the street, which is this really nice wide area to ride in a big group and do wheelies on. If you have a protected bike lane, now they are confined to the smaller area, which which increases the safety. So you see kids coming down like transport super fast on the sidewalk because they don't really have a good option otherwise. 
uh, that they have to take between him and the cars and that. And this will make it less appealing at least. To write I still have the same it. issues of uh, what are the very follow ups for us. Yeah, and, or the enforcement. A lot of times I'll be down at West Point, I'll go over and I'll see a few bikes there. there. But half of them are on the sidewalk for their own sky, and he's going the wrong direction and the bike will be going the opposite direction. And they're just, uh, it, it doesn't seem more they're on the street, on the sidewalk. So I don't know how you use it. You I, it you and I appreciate those conversations, Max, but I want to separate that because when we talk about infrastructure and stuff, then this request becomes a whole nother thing and it becomes very expensive and then that's where we lose. I'm thinking that this, I, I understand there's a ton of opportunities for infrastructure and bike lanes, but here I'm talking about like regulation that we can bring accountability and education to school children. So, um, and while infrastructure is obviously going to improve the safety, um, and I, I would want to challenge that, I would want to delineate and keep those separate in this request. So, among uh, besides the enforcement, because that's really the only thing you're going to change that's going to change behavior is discipline. That's and and we do that all the time, right? Whether it's how we speak to each other, whether it's pun whether it's some sort of punishment, but you know, like discipline isn't necessarily bad. But at the same time, remember, we're trying to change behavior. So how do you do that? The first kid, the first kid, okay, that's doing the wheelie up the street, okay, after crit, that gets caught by a school police officer or a San Diego police officer, loses his bike for however long. I say he because he, really the guys are the ones I see doing the wheelies. Okay? I see the girls riding more tandem without helmets. Yeah. And that makes me crazy too. But... You have to make the you have to you have to punish the children in a way that they that they learn a lesson. So you want to talk about that educational component? It's one thing to give an auditorium full of of, of hormone ridden teenagers some kind of message. It's another thing to take those to take those kids. You ever um, if I forget what the thing's called? So like every three minutes, it's a it's a it's a presentation that we used to do with the fire department. Basically, what it was we staged a, a DUI car crash with a bunch of high school kids. We pick them out of the. We pick them out early in the year. They don't. They don't get to tell anybody anything. Cool. All of a sudden, they disappear. Now there's dead kids that don't show up. Now all the kids are affected. Those kids go to the auditorium and they watch. They watch a movie about what happened. They watch the firefighters extricate cool. the kids. They watch the parents go to the emergency room and go, "Oh my God, my kid's gonna die." And then you watch parents go, "And oh my God, I've got a dead kid on the hood." Like it is a very, very, very solid message that shows everything. It's it's. It can't, it's very morbid, but it is very serious, and it's usually done right before proms. If you, you make, do that if, so oh, 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 every, oh, we, we, no, it's a very expensive process. It's not cheap, but what I, the point I'm trying to make is that if you were to make a child go to a trauma center and watch what happens in a hospital. They will change their behavior. If you make them go volunteer in a ward where there are children that have had brain damage from not wearing helmets, that will change their behavior. You don't do it by going, this is a financial penalty. Yeah, that's already part of the bike. And they go, yeah, my dad's rich. Yeah, I don't really exactly. care. Right? I know exactly who those kids are. I know, I know, I know yeah. exactly who those kids are. You bring up a good point, though, too. I recently read that the city of San Diego did recently get awarded some funding for traffic safety. I saw that they are going to be increasing some of their DUI patrols. I did see that portion. So, um, again, this is not... This doesn't have to be rushed through. I believe this is something that is necessary. It's been a common it's um, good. threat. It picks up even in the summertime. Uh, but I would again, just recommend sending this to, because um, we can send more when we want the letter. Mm -hmm. I would actually um, copy and send a copy of this because it's very active and actually does listen and take charge and helps to officer Solo. I would send a copy of this because he's our resident agent. I he does take this serious, and I've already seen him do stuff, work on this e bike situation and whatnot. So it would be nice to see that he can see that we're taking charge, and then also our local school principals, the ones here in Point Loma, I would put them on this so they know we're taking action as a as a um, community planning board, so they know that this is serious business that 
is eventually going to come their way. They all, just so they're aware that this is a, a bigger reach than just parents complaining. Yeah. No, I think it's something I think this letter would be great being sent to them. Yeah, I can definitely add them and the administrators to see if they have any feedback. But again, this is something to strengthen and create something. Uh, yeah, conversations care for um, more accountability. I, I like that. Because it seems to be exploding. I'm more proud of the press. Now. We're, We're not the only ones dealing with this. Michigan Hills. Let's just put a bunch of put a bunch of legislation in, and I can see kind of coattailing that, but at the same time, they're they're being very reactive. And they're the to, to, they're, 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 they're they're being reactive. They're being reactive to a fatality and some serious injuries that some of these kids have have, have sustained. Personally, um, I've been on a couple of these things in the in the community um, to varying degrees of, of injury. Luckily, I haven't had a fatality yet. But it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. So just so you know, like if if you really want to talk about the education portion of, of this, right? You, I mean, you want to think like the ten thousand, the thirty thousand foot level. Um, it's not just the children riding their bikes because you know I was a teenage kid around here and I had a bicycle and I jumped off things and rode on roads and had old people yelling at me and all that other kind of stuff, right? I mean, you will not change team behavior where you can influence that stuff is with the parents and the actual grown adults. This thing right here, okay, is just as bad as distracting that driver who missed that evac bike driver walk, going through traffic, okay? Our overpowered, humongous SUVs and whatnots, okay? There's a, there, there's a, there is also an education component Side of this oh, that, yeah. that, that so doesn't do that, and, and it is, and it is, it is a whole community. Like, hey, you yeah. know, like you say, like don't see don't the billboards are like that. You know, why do we have to have billboards that say nice things? Stop domestic violence. No. Like, like, dude, put a put a picture of a dude hanging, and this is what happens if you abuse your wife. Like, 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 like Europe, Europe, and like Are other like they do a great job other. of shaming people into better behavior yeah, they, do. they do like have you ever, you ever you ever seen the cigarette cartons in europe no they're pictures of the lungs like like and, and dead people yeah. they're disgusting they're gnarly you go whoa like of course i'm not gonna buy this but i think there's a i think there's an education component above and beyond that where it's like hey stop your distracted driving and slow down you know slow the f down right you can take that you can take that that F and that K work really, really well to show people like, hey, and they go, well, that's kind of offensive just because you're offended doesn't make you right. But at the same time, that's a message that somebody gets and they go, oh, it is a 25 zone. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> I'm on my phone. So I think you, you're you capturing what you want on this level. Yeah, and I just really excited to take it in all that. Do you want to take this? Do you want me to make a motion to take this to the board? For discussion, I don't think so. I think no. I'd like to continue. I don't think it's right. No, okay, it needs to be crafted more and then build up because I do like okay. the idea. Hey, Corey, oh, that was magical. <laughs> Why not? Look at her. Oh, no, she's, <laughs> she's keeping us alive. Oh, in my gosh, she's keeping us on our toes. So, I think what would be good, I'm gonna still record it just for um, yeah, record keeping. I think what would be good is, um, I like the idea, let's reach out to Cyril and see what he's feeling. Like. He's, he's already working on things. Yeah. And then um, talk to the administrators. Get these principals involved with this educational piece. It just depends. There's been a change. Kelly Lowry's no longer at uh, Point Loma High. There's oh. been a shift of, like, Dana, Correa, and Point Loma High School all have brand administrators. I'm sorry. We need to get with those So people. those are, um, I can reach out to them. And then, um, what was, and then we'll delineate the lines, you know, like what is recommendations and then what is already existing law so that we can kind of parse that out. That's a good idea. And I'd like then, to see Cirillo do, a, do an assembly at these schools, you know, with his staff. Well, I'm wondering if we should stuff. add we should add the police to this because again, if we add it and put this you class, have to. they can, this okays and it, this could write or it can connect their ass to the funding or develop. I'm just in my mind that saying that the police do take action when it's a community stuff. They listen, they read, and they will take it to their superiors. Of, hey, they got an issue of putting them with the e bikes. 
So, so the state, oh, so California Highway Patrol has a program. I don't know that it's still funded. So California Highway Patrol has a, has a, has a program that's funded. We had a friend, our, our friend, I think she was a sergeant. She ran the program and mm -hmm. they do. And she's got a, she had a staff of folks that were bike fit, they, they were, they were bike, they were bike rodeo experts. And it wasn't just the, the, the rinky dink thing that you remember maybe from elementary school. They, they had, they had very, they had different levels for kids, right? We so, 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 this, so I know it's, it's circular. It's circular. It's San Diego that's doing They're that. going through to schools for circular. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but cops don't take gum. From teenage kids, no, yeah. you know, so so, and they they, they tend to send. Well, I'm up. only seeing this on the elementary school. <laughs> so <laughs> no, 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 but 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 the Lord in you. If you were to make, if you were to make every single one of those kids, if those principals would make each one of those kids that locks their e-bike up, go, hey, by the way, here's your red tag, here's your here's your date for the bike fair, they'll go, oh what? Well, I think yeah. that's where I, I really see this be as a requirement and that maybe there'd be a pilot program mm -hmm. that we could go up here in the, you know, something that we don't have to recreate the will. It's just whatever is existing there that we can get an emphasis in there and then as well, seeing if there's some regulations that they can build up for that accountability. But um, CHD, mm -hmm. and then do you have a contact? Do you have I, I use that. Can I follow up with you on that? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll give her a shot. Uh, if Cyril uh, or, or someone who's a policeman did a, a presentation, that's what I'm saying. If they could bring a uh, either a fireman or a paramedic who experienced one of these things. Yeah, do you do that with the police? Do you do any Yeah, we have all kinds of we have all kinds of responsibility for community outreach. Like we and I mean, the, there's stuff that I'm sure that, that, that might that might that might that might be stuck in it that might be stuck in a. You know, it might, might be in a deep chest somewhere in our community. Resources. Do you know if there's anything new with the firefighters that they're offering for community safety? Our, 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 community, our, our community outreach stuff is for right now uh, is mostly based on like the, the, the fire safety because it's fire safety okay. for October. Right, that's it. Um, but that doesn't mean that, and I mean, we're hey, your boot, your boot. That's where muscular dystrophy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, I that's, that's, that's where that's where Yeah, I love um, that. It's like, it's okay. So cool. Well, I, let's. I like this. Let's have this. Let's come back to this. I. We can, good start. Yeah, and again, Excellent. like I really, you know, I remember in the beginning, I'd be like, let's move this. We need to move this. I really take in that that approach. I really want it to be a better product, be consistent, and be thoroughly. Um, have a conversation and bring it to the board. So there's, there's no reason there's for no rush, this. There's, there's no, no rush. rush to push this. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's why, like, when I push this out, it's like, this is start yeah. one. Okay. <laughs> like, open it up. Everyone has a free bra. And I, that's just my strategy. I do like, um, and let me know. I don't want to keep, keep I do yeah, try to do this. No, I was listening while I was walking in and just hearing kind of the, I think the education is important, sort of the, the, the videos. And even, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a, that young blogger, just think the impact of um, people that are riding bikes or kids seeing you know, what could occur is more than a word can say. Sometimes. I would so, agree. You know, that's really where my um, story about my passion for traffic safety comes from. When I was nine, um, we had a family friend, Andrew Lawrence, when he was in first grade. He got struck on his way home from school. Um, he, he was partially down at fault, but his, he was playing with a little friend and Walk, you know, he ran him out into the street and he got hit and he turned into his quadriplegic and ended up dying at 21. His parents divorced, he went through such poor, just a loss of everything. And so that is my connection. So I totally get, I still remember going to the children's hospital in Phoenix and seeing him tubed up and just like seeing a before and after. I had just seen him at a wedding. He's like that Dennis the Menace type kid. I just, Rob, I just, I just, I just don't so. see where all these kids are doing all this because I I live and breathe Point Loma and all around Midway and there, and I don't see anybody being irresponsible with these e-bikes. So I, 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 I see it. 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 Daily. It's, out of my it's, yeah. <laughs> it's daily. It's like on next door. People, like, it's it's just really down. Yeah. 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 And those they're heavy machinery. I mean, yeah. 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 Y
Oh yeah, in the parking lot yes. at Jensen's. Oh, yeah. They all they come all the way down Catalina. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like when you get two or three together, there's issues, be especially cool. after school. Mm -hmm. And then when the summer months came, yeah, then it was a uh, But I would say they got to drop off time as well. And again, where sure. Darren said, it, it's not just, you know, we do observe the hygiene, but there are opportunities for the best residents as well, you know, with education. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just, the but I mean, some of the lights <laughs> could have the capability of doing things. From the flight level, I'm sure as a kid. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Go wheelie and all that stuff. Okay. I saw a guy doing a wheelie on Fourth yeah. Avenue, and he's going up and down the street. Now it's a you know it was a not a busy time, but it's a it's a strip with double yellow lines. Did you show? Uh, no, I didn't. I took a picture of him. Then he, he, uh, I took a while he was on the wheelie, um, and then he pulled up and, and talked to one of the neighbors who was there. And I don't think he knew. Yeah. So he talked to the neighbor for a while. But he was going down the street and up the street and pulling away away. <clears throat> and uh, I've seen kids like in pack in, in times. Uh, if they're on a local street, I mean, in reality, they're on a city street and they should be following the rules. If there was a place to ride in, like a parking lot or something that was controlled or, you know. But most of the time, <laughs> I think, yeah, like I said, this is, um, and again, I love, I love it when we do right by the community, but again, mm -hmm. this is something that's not just perceived as something there, there's existing legislation, yeah. I think there's an opportunity that's to great. fill that gap and get education. Mm -hmm. so we're trying to get it ahead of the, the, yes. the bill news, there's more of these things too. Well, that, I'm just saying, like, hey, let's be the leaders of this, you know, you guys all want these pipelines, well, let's okay. do the education and the safety part of it, that's, you know, it needs to balance, I think there's always opportunities. And so, just one thing, and I mean, not to interrupt, like different committees and stuff, but I know that like a couple of uh, students are coming on. Yeah. So maybe just get their thoughts as to. You like, know, I'm gonna. That's, that's a great idea. It's a good idea. I'm gonna push this out to them yeah. because um, so we got Addison back. She even getting like I know in our past, in the past with fights and to win and stuff like that, I had to go out and document things and take photos and mm -hmm. show proof behind a letter. Why can't some of these teens to even do that if they're willing to commit? Do some research and just add some kind of backup to the letter will really show, you know, what we're talking about in the community. I think there's some about opportunities for them to look, review it. I think along with the administrators to see their perspective and see that, you know, because they're there every day. They yeah. See from that level, well, maybe they could see you're about to get a lot of them. You're, yes. you're about to get a lot of outside input. Um, I recommend you just shelve it till next month and see, or, or you know, like continue. Oh, yeah, months. no, we're and not, then, and we're just, not and approving it. Just, see where, just yeah. see, where, see where this goes. After yeah. conversations, yeah. it's through absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're not, we're not yeah, approving this at all. Right no, no, no. So I have some good needs. Yeah, I think it'll do great. And then we can group that. And then next month, we'll bring this. Now, speaking, I do want, before we move on to our final um, action item, I do want to know next month the Voltaire people are calling. They, they have gotten two emails from that. The city hasn't installed any of the stuff that we have. Oh, so, no, really? Yeah, so. Do you have any updates? We, I will well, reach out again. They're going to be the get, same get some month So though. I'm going to reach out, see what where they're at, if there's anything from their intense. If not, what I think we're going to do is we're going to call them back, but I'm going to see if they're interested in doing like a rally and then we'll invite Dan and KUSI and get a little loud and say like, hey, we've been asking, these are funded, they're approved. And they One of them was on Jen Campbell's, of, like, yeah, of time, 22 or 20. found that. It was on the 22 budget, it's still not there, and it's funded, it's approved, it's prioritized, and they can't um, install it. And it's just annoying. I just care. Have you thought about going in front of the council and exposing? And what? For exposing. And exposing? Like, I mean, that's been done like, like, a couple like, times. Well, well, I'm talking about like a public forum where, where you have 
four or five people who have been affected by this mm -hmm. stand in front of council. We so could shame them. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I, yeah. Because, oh, I've, I've do watched it. enough videos of people just standing up there, just public comment. Oh yeah. Not really saying anything. But like yeah. actually yeah. having somebody like, like have a coordinated non-public comment. We all go down. Somebody with, the, with, the, with, the, with these facts that you already have. Yeah. Right? I mean, I can also read with our letters to the city. We have a lot. We have like several. We have how many letters? Three letters. Let's, um, I like that idea. I do too. And so, yeah, let's do it. The last thing I'll say is politically in, in a forum where they're getting she called she out. You, you know what? You know what? But when, 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 when other people around go, wait, you're not, you're not doing this, that pressure, remember, politi like, like politically, like you, you want, you want to be people like, yeah, I need your vote here. Like, no. Remember that one time where you stepped on my toe and you spit my coffee? Yeah. Right? Like, now like you say that in your, in your follow up. This is where we're at. If we don't get this yeah. a concrete date to get the sentence calling, we're taking this to council as a public. You know, what's the action? Sorry, what's the action on Voltaire? On Voltaire, we've had um, funded and approved mitigations. And we they came, we, we had them waiting there. The neighbors had a couple of incidents. So they approached the board. They wanted to uh, coalesce and get some mitigations. Um, but what ended up happening happens. is that we had a bunch of the neighbors show up. So one neighbor wanted stop signs, and we went down that road. Oh, okay. And then they came yeah. back and said, hey, we don't want those stop signs. Yeah. So, we and the stop signs. so we removed all the stop signs, kept mm -hmm. everything that we'd originally Wasn't it with Bolinas? Yes, we but, removed the stop signs. but we removed all the stop signs and just said, let's give the city time to do We gave them six months. Okay. And so at six months, we're going to come back and Okay. And the funding's <laughs> there on gentle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's there. So we just stuck. But but he is right. We can bring the letters. We we asked. We have every the dated letters. I mean, this is six years old. It's really pathetic. So yeah. Let's and now we have someone on the PCP board that takes the letters and keeps Jen accountable for all the action items that we. So we're keeping her accountable. Yeah. Is, but that's a different. I have, I have. Okay. Yeah, and I think we That's need to ask you, budget. where do we request yeah. this? Because in the budget, um, yeah. request, we did ask for that. We did. Okay. So um, now, thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to the next course of um, those grants. Could I mention oh, something? Yes. I probably should have brought up earlier. It may have something to do with the flight thing. I was, sure. just, I was on a cruise and I came back into Vancouver about a month ago okay. and uh, took a bus tour for the day. And I was kind of surprised because I know Vancouver has a lot of up there and a lot of people riding on bike lanes. I, they do not have bike lanes on the major streets. They have bike lanes on, on, I guess, side streets or they have them in parks. I saw lots of people on bicycles. They all look like they were following rules. I didn't see any bikes on major streets. On the major streets. I did not, uh, of course, I was on all four of them, but uh, I, I just think that maybe, maybe they have an education uh, uh, thing where they have uh, lane force. Or people just are nicer and they do what they're supposed to up there. And that kind of runs along of like some of the issues we've had in our community with regards to like Rosecrans, mm -hmm. where we wanted to push the traffic off to a side street or like going up Catalina, doing Santa Barbara so events as opposed to the main track, even with mm -hmm. the sheriffs and their confusion <laughs> and, and all that fun stuff. So, so yeah. I just, just think that okay. our design might be different up there and maybe take a different tag that. To decide to only put the bikes where they really make sense. And I don't know if there are ways to get from A to B the next three over. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. I know here we have a lot of canyons and things, that, but they probably have built some anything up there too. I'm not sure. Yeah, with the thermometer, yeah. how they keep the bikes off the major streets. Okay. Well, I've written that on the notes. I have that. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. All right. So moving on, we have a review for Rosecrans. We've been talking about this. Let me pull up some slides. Uh, I'll give the floor to Matt. He's kind of the leader on this. Um, I don't think I have the dead bolt. Let me pull up the reboot. Uh, reboot. So um it is posted on the website. Um we did have a beginning of this discussion and then Matt um 
we, we kind of built this up. Max wanted to bring this. We have a lot of changes on the peninsula in our city in general. We have the airport expansion, um, and they are doing some changes to the flow of traffic on and off the peninsula, as well as the transit hub that's going to be going out um, by the Port Authority building along with five. Um, and so there's going to be some changes there. Um, Rosecrans as such has been an issue for our community for several years. It's just a very busy set of uh, stretch of road with military traffic um, coming out of the sub base and then pushing into the midway area. That neighborhood dramatically changes from the street view. So there's some opportunities and just with the high level of traffic, we're limited with some of our um, mitigations. Like for example, um, certain crosswalks, we can't do any pedestrian, but it has to be um, like a hot because of the high level of traffic. And we have um, some opportunities here. And so um, Max has done this based off like what Sandag has out there, what the city has currently with their studies and with what is currently out there. And we're kind of seeing if there's an opportunity to craft a plan of recommendations from our traffic committee to present to the board. Um, to the city to sure. show what we want to see potentially. I mean, they don't listen to us, but again, this is something that we do uh, sometimes. Well, we'd like to. Can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. Um, first of all, by several years, do you mean 40? Because ever since I was a little kid, <laughs> yeah. Rosecrans has been under, under right. construction. <laughs> I, I, it was, I remember when it was a when it was two lanes either way, yeah. mm -hmm. right? With very, very big islands. Yes. And then there was construction for a very long time, which made it three lanes going out, You're two correct. lanes coming in, and then they started, and then they switched it all up, and it's still two lanes, three lanes, yes. yeah, and then I started putting those islands in. Any reduction in those lanes will be, I wouldn't say like a monumental fight, I would say like it would be a world war. Of yeah. And yeah. The, reason, the reason I say that is because we do not have a culture of mass transit yet. Nor will we, especially with a with a place like Point Loma, it, and and I, and I say this with 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 a lifelong of experience sitting in traffic in those mm -hmm. No matter what the mitigations that they've ever done to widen and improve that that land, it's the best that it's ever been right now. It is. This is the best that it's ever been. I was in the traffic so today. Like it's it's not a, it's not a, it's it's a, it. Any reduction in those lanes is going to be, it's going to be. Well, just go sit, it's, go it's sit not, at Sushi Lounge Point Loma. Well, the thing is, is our outside. community, we end. We don't go all the way okay. to there. So we, we stop. We're at Litton. We're going to stop there. We would like to see if there's some connectors to like the Old Town um, Transit. I think that was a discussion that had been brought up. That's but again, this. The way the committee runs is it's in committee. And we have things that don't come out of committee. This is a big undertaking. And so uh, I just have a quick question. Is anybody sit on Rosecrans right now when you're going past um, at any time of day and you're going past the radio station and there's that AMP on there like that? Anybody sit in that for the 20, 30 minutes nowadays? Yeah, but I mean then it like... is out of control. And is it bad these buildings or? haven't even been built yet. The old post office off yeah. of um, off of the uh, apartment. There's going to be about twenty to thirty thousand oh, people. Is that the There's going to be twenty to 30, 30, 000 people. They're saying on that to that pause. Well, let's go. Sure. But Rosecrans, I'm with you too on that. It's the best that I've seen so far. The only issue I have still to this day are the pedestrians that still continue, which most of them are employees and fishermen, that still continue to cross Rosecrans in front of Jack, Jack in the Box and um, oh, well, the other way. Well, first of all, I mean, there's so really like three streets that we should be talking about. Here, do that again. Yeah, I'm not 
So uh, no, so probably not. Because uh, I have to go because I'm a chair. I just want to say that before we get started on this, we have to recognize we have like really three or four different segments of that street. You know, there's the one south of the, you know, the California. Yes. And then there's a four lane section of street that's between that and, uh, let's say, okay. Don't so worry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're not going to make any decisions. We're not going to make any decisions. Yeah. Oh, we're not yeah. Yeah. And then I'll see you on Thursday. Good job. Good stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay. All right. I, I agree that. that that section is the, the one section that I think is good is going to get um, from uh, Lytton to uh, to uh, Nimitz. Because I, I do have access the, to the. Uh, it's just gym. the. I was just going to talk about the mobility study itself. So the PDF sandbag release. Okay. okay so, so do we need to? If we link it, I guess it'd be fine. Like this is just what they put out. Okay. Are you going to read from it? Uh, I was just going to show the pictures. Okay. That's fine. Just follow. Uh, Yes. Yeah, yeah, the pictures are good. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Yes. So a lot of discussion here. Last time, uh, I presented this big packet where I summarized and gave maybe my uh, two cents on uh, Sandag's uh, proposed uh, improvements to rose currency as part of the central mobility hub study. This is uh, so uh, ever since twenty. Okay. Uh, if, you, uh, if you make a transit project within a uh, metropolitan area, you need to do a corridor study and uh, a mobility study, which means you encompass a whole wide area of sort of where you look at different uh, improvements to roadways, bikeways, and um, uh, transit. And so they're planning on building this um, uh, central mobility hub in the old Port Authority building down uh, by uh, the airport. And then they're planning on linking that up to the airport with some sort of people or something of the sort. As part of this, they have gone through and given a bunch of recommendations on what they will uh, do to other parts in uh, Point Loma. And Rosecrans is heavily modified in uh, this section. Um, let's see, first one here. Um, uh, I think this is, yes, so oh, wait, this is the current one. Um, okay, so I guess I can just explain it. Um, here, uh, they are planning on adding protected bike lanes to the Rose Grants itself. So these are, if you've ever seen the flex posts, those are the quick build solutions, what they do before they put the concrete work in, or they'll put a uh, concrete curve or something like that, block, as well as adding bus lanes. And then Paul and I were talking about this a little bit. It says that there will be uh, two lanes in each direction, and it marks it as a transit lane. Uh, we suspect that that means two lanes in each direction, and that uh, one of those lanes in each direction is a bus line, uh, based on uh, what they proposed. Yes, yeah. only. Oh. Is that what they're proposing? I know that was. No, no, that is what's that's in there. Weird. Yes. Yes, I don't think I'm going to talk too much about this for, uh, because. Um, while there were a bunch of suggestions last time when I gave this year. And while I had, so for instance, one of them is keep the bike lanes off of Rosecrans, use Bessemer to Scott School instead, keep the bike lanes closer to the uh, base and utilize Scott and uh, Street at the bottom and Evergreen at the top to go over. Um, there's maybe a gate that we can open between the gas station mm -hmm. as well. Um, and to split up this design into many different sections. Uh, the final thing that we want to maintain access to Old Town if we get rid of the bike links that are there along uh, Rosecrans. And so I was going through this, I was looking at all the different things uh, that were mentioned here, and I realized there's just so much data which you would need in order to actually do these calculations that I don't have. Uh, so, or, and it's also expertise that probably would make you do better decisions than, what, for instance, you try Googling what, like, when to use a roundabout, when to use something else, and you get very conflicting information about, oh, yeah, the roundabouts are great for traffic calming, but also get killed with bicyclists. And, you know, <laughs> I, I do not want that on my um, uh, conscience if I make that decision. So I think a uh, more productive use than necessarily listing exactly, like, down to the detail what the changes are that we want. We might want to look at the changes that they're proposing uh, and say a uh, higher level picture of what we want. So, for instance, a very good one is we think 
that uh, we should separate the bicycles from road strands onto uh, parallel streets. And then, uh, but that they should still maintain the access to one all road strands there. And then they should come up with an engineer to actually give us solutions that will meet all the guidelines that are necessary for this. Um, that also probably has a budget associated with mm -hmm. it and not a uh, mic work. I would agree, uh, just to pause there, I agree with that approach. We should look at what they've got on the books and then give feedback on that and then build on like, yeah, in addition, we'd like to see these, you know, nights. Nice I do like that. And then did you separate the map because we had talked about, was it Nimitz being the, the boundary, like to go the south or sections. yeah, different sections because mm -hmm. of how, you know, from Nimitz to Lytton, that street yes. looks a lot different than from Lytton right. to the sub base. That's a whole different game, and I don't want to be recommending. So the past yeah. uh, studies have yeah. all yeah. split it into four sections. There's from the sub base until the elementary school. Okay. Actually, it probably goes Kelmsey Canyon. I mean, and it, it's where it does have four lanes. It's kind of like yeah, so exactly. four lanes. Section, okay. It spreads out and gets there. I guess it's before the like area with the lights. That's where it's not. So you, so you so split it into four sections. Between Talbot and Canyon, it's can't. But but at between Talbot and Canyon, you have a expansion of lane. Yeah. That's where the expansion mm -hmm. of the lanes happens, yeah. and then a reduction of lanes happens. Right. A reduction of lanes coming south, right, right. into the sub base mm -hmm. right from from four to two. Four lanes. Four lanes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I'm thinking like it's 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 the street. Is it uh, Avenida de Portugal? No, that's not. Where, where the, but, but, that, but that but it's that's the, I no what because Cannon it's because Cannon has already become one lane. Oh, by that point. The lanes were reduced a street or two before then. Maybe at like West Marine. Okay, maybe at like Emerson right or now, something uh, like that. So no, maybe one of, them's a, one of them is a right, one's of a right turn right. lane, but you've reduced yes. that to one lane yes. right there about Shelter Island Drive, right. right? So anyway, I'm sorry. So that's good that it's even more detailed. I like that. Um, even but the reason is that a lot of the traffic turns off on the Kansas. And then one other thing that I do want to add, apologies. This is going to be, I like that same structure to be what we push back to long range planning too, because we want long range planning to make their recommendations or uh, we could maybe group it together and make it with the end product, but we do want to put their feedback as well. Mm -hmm. um, because of the you know it being long range, long term planning. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. Sorry, can this committee recommend like I guess push that over to the yeah, we've already talked to Javier. He's already agreed to that because of the last few meetings. And so, yeah, we're going to divide. He's looking at it more from like from the planning perspective and stuff. Where there's less of that. Actually, the study doesn't talk about land use pretty much at all, except um, it has a couple projections of how it will grow, which is the sub base doesn't grow at all. And um, I think like 10% growth within the next. 10 or 20 years. Do you know if in the study they have anything that they talk about traffic volumes and those kind of hundreds? I mean, the traffic volumes are like three times what they are in Park Grove where they did this. And, uh, you know, to go down to one lane of traffic and one lane for buses. And so, the white lanes, I mean, the same configuration for triple of traffic in some areas. Of just it, Did they really look at this? Or yeah. are they just trying to. So I suspect uh, that uh, they. Uh, maybe looked at it a little bit, but they definitely don't have the detailed numbers of like what the volumes are and what they expect after. There's sort of a couple of different phases in this. This is more of a uh, higher level plan of what would you like to build. And then there's, I think the steps later are your environmental studies, because uh, the environmental impact report would have that sort of information in it of what what the traffic volumes look like afterwards. And, and would I be correct in stating um, that the airport with this whole expansion that they're trying to divert the traffic and encourage it so that they come off of the five? Is that? <laughs> it makes it worse. I know, <laughs> but that's what I'm asking. Is that, is there any movement of the traffic pattern 
um, would like the people to hear that they're. They want to get people that. on the transit that they're going to put in so they yeah. don't have to park somewhere. Yeah, so I'm thinking, you know, where the rental car place is, there's a lot of the new rental car place over there that would be near where they're expanding. So I'm wondering if there's going to be like a ride share or parking ride type space where they connect to a people mover of some sort or trolley that connects to the airport. So when they did the presentation, um, for you remember this, right? The presentation, they, they mentioned specifically like. The uh, takeoff they had a number of cars over there. You take off X number of cars from the road with this uh, transportation from the airport. And yeah, they've got like building a like separate road. I think is what they mentioned. There. Okay. So yes. I'm not sure if it's elevated or something, but uh, along our uh, road drive, uh, yes. there will be some other roadway mitigation. However, ironically, that is not included in this at all. Um, there is no mention that the airport is doing this, uh, and it's <laughs> only about the. Uh, uh, people yeah. over which they plan on building. Yeah. The one that will likely actually be built is between the airport rental place, this new coaster trolley, and or I guess it's not a new trolley station, the new coaster uh, existing trolley station and bus terminal at the airport, uh, uh, at the Port Authority Transit Center. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then the airport itself. So multiple steps. If you start with the rental car goes and then go over to the transit center yeah. and then continue to the airport. Yes, and depending on the configuration, we're going to have one or two stops at the airport. If it was a full size trolley, we're going to have one stop. That was what we saw. I think the yeah. airport made this presentation that they had spots, space for one stop. One stop. Safe. Yeah. So, I thought they were going to Okay. Um, it, it doesn't, uh, Mike mentioned it in here. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a Harbor good. Island station and an airport station. They're separate here. They might be distinct, but they're really close to each other. So there's a couple different ways. Harbor Island station. Yeah. Are they going to go across the road? Into our road? I think so. This whole thing would be elevated. <laughs> so so I mean, if you just if you're just taking the people that want to go to the airport and you're adding on to secure this route to make an extra stop to get to the airport, it's just going to drive the you know not take a lot. Of so if you ask me, should we recommend that? High speed train from here to uh, Orange County oh, Airport. Oh, <laughs> I'm all for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah forever. They build, they try to, they, they can't go from A to B without diverting around to pick people up on the way. So, if you're going to stop at uh, by, one of the, by the hotels or something, and then you eventually get to the airport, people are just going to go, gee, you know, I could have taken an Uber and been there. 30 minutes ago. Uh, well, I just don't. I dealt with some of these people. Don't get it. Not being I dealt with some of these people. Like, uh, so, my recommendation is, is let's, as we're building this, if you want to um, break it up into parts, mm -hmm. and then we've got the four parts, you want to separate what the city is recommending. So, you want to spell that out, and then and then based on, then we'll, we'll we'll have conversation for each portion of that. Um, based on what we've already talked about, you may have some mitigation to add there. But I think that could be something we look at um, and start closer to the sub base and then push out because as we get closer to the airport, that will that will definitely potentially change. But um, we could build it that way to make it easy. If that's something you want. You know, they are building like uh, the new terminal has something like 22 gates in a row where the planes are sitting next to each other. I know, I saw it's the like configuration. It's tight. Times 22, yeah. You're up to, you know, two thirds of a mile. And if you're going to have one bus that one stop over here to serve Terminal 2 and to serve these people over here, they're going to be hoofing it for a long way. Uh, I'm not sure how we take care of that or. or where the terminal is for terminal one is in the middle of those 22 gates, so they go this way. Because no, then they are to have to walk a quarter mile from transit to get to the terminal, and then your gate may be back right here. Oh, depending where it's where the but stop the, but is. The, but the reality of that airport is there's nothing that you can do. That machine is moving. I remember when they started it, and we had went to a full presentation of it, and there's nothing that, that, that is going to happen. When they started on the on on the on terminal two, okay. They all, there is already a plan for transit movement, which you're already starting to see the infrastructure being built right now on Harbor Tech. And that's, and that's, I mean, that, I'm not talking about like a trolley stop, I'm talking about like. So I was just, I, I saw that there was a, a people mover show, and one of these studies, two stops, one at Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. 
And now uh, you're saying that the airport only has one stop? No, I'm, I'm saying that the airport has, already has plans for expansion. To yeah, on that. Like, the, like, like what you saw, it, it might not be the final iteration based on based on the phasing that's going on. It might be something where they say, hey, this is going to be phase one. This is the phase one. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. like the, but the phase five that's going to happen is going to be it, it, it's going to look significantly different from 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 that one stop, and I don't believe that there's a single stop. I think that they, I think that you know just what you're seeing with that little bus that goes from the rental center and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff is just kind of in that first that that first phase of that thing. Oh, it's been there for a long time. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but I mean that's but they've already thought about that. But as far as like the rose is it is this something that, that we're just going to start we're just going to keep kind of pecking at? Yeah. It's okay. Not, it's not high right. priority right Can now. Can I add a monorail like, to that? <laughs> like, well, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not like, like, I, like, I like, really you want to talk about like elevated transit, like, like put a gondola in or something because, yeah, because, 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 because room is at room, you're, you're, you're at a premium for, for space. You cannot share bike, bus, car with 150,000 cars. <laughs> Like, you just keep, like, well, I don't, I don't know if it's like that. Bucks was put up, and I think Javier was saying at the other meetings that they're talking about putting, uh, if they extend the whatever they call it out of here, they would come home and take it to the station. And maybe they would go aerial over the station like a lot of the trolleys are right now. Uh, and we're, there is green space to be able to put something like that there. Um, you may be over a building or something or other. But that's where you bike. I mean, you got an opportunity for. Bike lanes. No, I'm not saying you take the street up. You may not take the street up. You may go, you may have, a, you know, like a, these big posts with them up in the sure. air. You know, like, like a lot of the new ones are doing. Yeah. I mean, that's why they're so expensive. They're building a little area. Mm -hmm. so, maybe I have to, I have to so next week, you have to run. Yeah, we're going to wrap this up. Are you, with your kind of recommendations, what are you, like, I mean, are, with your kind of research, what are you, um, Kind of what plan is proposing? Are you think you will be able to kind of comment on those sections? Because you've done quite a bit of research. Uh, so I think we should uh, talk about each of the sections okay. of what we envision sort of the road to look like. So, for instance, the subway section, they have the existing bike lanes stay there, nothing changes. Uh, the mm -hmm. Canyon to Nimitz state uh, plan on um, adding uh, find the map that I can uh, clear. So, um, so and even if they say like, and I know like, no, if they say they want a bus line, we could say, hey, we don't agree with that, or, or we, you know, I'm not saying that that's our approach, but we could say we don't want bike lanes on Rosecrans. We want them over here because this is, you know, because well, that's, of that's a choice. We yeah, that's a choice. Lanes, yeah, so, yeah. so those are some bike lanes are one thing because they don't take as well. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, it could be dangerous, but a bus lane to take where you have all this traffic and put a bus on there, it's going to have like eight vehicles an hour. And we've been playing the rest of the time. It's just going to be. Well, that would be something you could ask for, like a uh, study to show that it will be able to move the same number of people as are in that uh, lane. That's if everybody parks their car and gets on and gets on a bus. I mean, mm -hmm. are they going to do that? I doubt it. So the, the next step is that we'll be able to kind of separate out areas, like look maybe. Are you thinking that? So what? So what I think would be good is like. Talk about these sections. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. So uh, I guess back along here, it's just say some of the existing uh, bike lane. Um, then they plan on extending the bike lane. I think it stops at a couple points throughout the um, sort of uh, square grid area before you hit North Harbor Drive, and then adding a protected bike lane. You sort of have this whole network of what they. Uh, plan. So the ones along the limits, for instance, are already there. Um, the, where does it start? Uh, where does it start going that way? I mean, I know it's uh, this is North Harbor Rose. Drive intersection with uh, Rosecrans, which is still part of the. Um, can, I make, can I make a recommendation to actually have a discussion about each one of these separate things? I, yeah, that's like, like, are, a big, yeah. like a bigger meeting, like a longer meeting, because. This is very convoluted. Yeah. There's a so this lot is what I'm going to recommend. No, no, no. Yeah, and, and, and so there's, a, there's, a so lot, there's a lot to take into this because it's good. Like, it it's really good. It's, there's a lot of good discussion. So, Max, this is what we're going to do. You have the four sections. You know what the city has. We're going to start with the section closest to the sub base. What we need to do is parse out from what you have, what is the city recommending, and organize it in each separate section. Are you section. saying city or are you saying Sanda? Sanda, yeah. Whatever they are recommending there. Then we need to piece through those and look at that. And 
private pictures, I will support you with if you need any printouts like I had in the past. So if you need anything printed out for visuals, we can do that. But then um, the second thing is um, you need to organize, like add what we've already discussed and then we can have the discussion at the next meeting. And I think it would be good to break it down by each section um, so that we can build it up and then we can pass it over long end planning, see what they have to say, Follow that same structure, and then we can build up something. Can I say that just say that if we start, we're not getting. We're not going. Yeah, we're not getting a full picture of what the proposal is. I think we need yeah. to see what the proposal is further down. Yes, that see would. Mary, though, can see if it, if it's that is that so is the correct. Hard part about this. So that was the main issue, and why I haven't updated this packet is we were trying to focus on rose grants, mm -hmm. and as soon as you try changing for don't put the bike in the rose grants, now you've brought an evergreen. And now that you've brought an evergreen, how far do you go? It really can easily spiral into something where we're asking, okay, can we please get an uh, update to the community plan that includes a new transit, new roadways, and new biking, which has been a really long time. The last time the community plan was updated is 86, so it's probably that, but that's a very, very large group. So, but that, but that's the Midway Planning District. Yeah, I think and that's one of those things where you were, if, if we were to have a conversation with, with those folks, so would, what, do they, what do they know, or do we even care? We do care because it does impact our community sure. that happens there. Sure. You know, that is a lead into our community. So I agree with what yeah, you can't have a, like a change from he needs to. We need to show what what they intend to do because that will help Agreed. potentially guide our recommendation of what we're asking the city. So I would like to see more information. Um, that could change potentially. I mean. With midway rising, but I, yeah, that's to, to be determined. October twentieth, everyone for here. So, um, just FYI. So, do you agree with that thought process of well, next meeting when we come, we'll you'll just have the one portion, and then we'll have a conversation, and, we'll, yeah. and then we'll go to the next what the next portion at the next meeting, and then we'll slowly build it up from there. Um, is there, is there yeah, I don't know what is going. on. Might be an e bike kid. No, we have a security problem. Um, so it's a. We have an issue with someone who can use breakers. Oh, uh, I see. Recently. In our, so you got a timer on. Yeah. All right. So do you, we all agree with that uh, uh, process? I, I, Max, I, I, I agree with that, but I think that if we if we had a, a layout like you had there, of what four sections look like, and we're going to look at this one. And that's what, what I told him. Like at the same time. We're going to. So this is the proposal. Briefly on these other sections, what yeah. they're looking at. So now, let's, you know, so email me the. You know how I printed up the maps the last time. The yes. each section, yeah, yeah. When we All did right. the board, so print off a map like we'll do it from section to section. So to Talbot or Cam, wherever the the line is, yeah. Print off a map, and so that we can have a clear read of like what the connector streets are or like what we're looking at. Uh, so those street diagrams or uh, yeah, just, just the map. map, yeah, like what we okay. pieced it last time when we pieced it. So oh, that yeah, yes, so yes, we'll yes, just yes. piece it around four sections. Well, and then oh, I can bring. I, can I was going to say, do we, do we even have to worry about the first section? No, but it's something's going to change. I so would make. I don't think that there what, is what anything. Do do? Yeah. The, the only so, reason I say yes is, is, is it might be a short discussion, mm -hmm. but at least we discussed it. And 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 it, and, it, and you yeah. know it doesn't like 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 you you want you want to do your due diligence like well what about this section because the last thing you want to do is like think well it was important yeah right that so, out. and yeah. there was a study that looked at having three roundabouts on that whole uh, section yeah, there which is <laughs> which is not right that there. Bad. And a stop sign that stole on that street at one point. It was a while ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago, and it it backed traffic up so much that it was removed in about four days. Of I know by a bunch of uh, kids on skateboards. So um, I'm going, if, if that's all, I'm going to, is everybody adjourn the meeting right now? All right, so it's 7, 17 p.m. and we're going to call this meeting. Um, we're going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you everyone for attending.